Hi everyone, my name is Splin and every Friday I show video digest of the motorcycle news. The first piece of news is quite unusual. As you probably know, the only makers that decided to engage in the hybrid motorcycles, motorcycles that have an internal combustion engine and an electric engine at the same time, was Kawasaki, and its hybrid concept has not yet reached production. Other big motorcycle makers stay away from this segment, while the startup type of companies focus primarily on electric motorcycles. So the news came as a complete surprise to everyone. Not only developed countries tighten the ecology-related regulations – Euro 5, 6, etc. – but they also launch emission-free zones in big cities with restricted access to the ICE – internal combustion engines – powered vehicles. What is the news about? There is a German company called Vitesco Technologies that produced power units. So the guys analyzed all the regulatory trends and came up with a kit that transforms the ICE-powered motorcycle into a hybrid one. The kit is made up of an electric engine delivering 16 horsepower, 48 volt voltage, a battery with a capacity of 1.5 kilowatt hours and a controller. The addition of an automated smart transmission, centrifugal clutch and an intelligent actuator allows riders to swap between power sources. Vitesco recommend internal combustion operation for the highway and winding roads, while city riding suits the e-motor. In electric mode, the firm reports that the battery nets 30 km when the average speed remains under 60 km per hour. The kit adds 20 kg to the curb weight of the model and is claimed to cut emissions by 75%. Looks like a cool solution for the cities with restricted access for the ICE-powered vehicles. If you follow the last decade of the Moto Guzzi history, you know that from 2007 to 2016 they produced a big bore adventure bike with a classical for the Guzzi transfers between engine, called Stelvio. The bike was named after one of the most popular mountain passes in Italy, the road known for its incredible turns and undulations and loved by motorcycle and car enthusiasts. The sales were not booming, so the bike didn't survive Euro 4 and was replaced with a mid-size V85 a few years later. But it seems that the maker decided to relaunch the big bore ADV model and even presented it at ICMA in a quite a funny way. Motoguzzi stand had a lead board depicting an eagle flying atop the Stelvio Pass. Atop the display was Stelvio embedded in styled font. Below were two spoke tubeless wheels all that the maker was ready to present at the point. What does it mean? Well, the spokes mean that the bike will be off-road capable. Tubeless tires mean that the maker likes its client. And the 19-inch front wheel means that the primary purpose of the dual sport bike will be travel rather than Enduro. And the two big float and brake discs suggest that the bike will be a powerful one. Chances are that the new Stelvio will not be BMW R1250 JS or KTM 1290 Super Adventure rival, as Moto Guzzi do not have an engine with similar specs. Most likely, the bike will get the engine of the new V100, 1042cc of displacement delivering 115 horsepower, so the bike will compete in the segment of the Multistrada V2 that has a 950cc engine with a similar power output. Let's wait for the maker to show the other components of the bike. If you are into motorsport, you know what HRC stands for – it's Honda Racing Corporation. But even if you are not a motorsport fan, you might still have a sense of the Honda DNA. For a long time, the maker tested its most innovative solution on track before introducing them on serial bikes. CB750, for example, the first mass production motorcycle with an inline four-cylinder engine that disrupted the motorcycle world. And on December 12, 2022, Honda announces the development of technologies for electric motorcycle. Honda director and senior management executive officer Shinji Aoyama stated, among others, that Honda has already been conducting research and development of technologies for carbon neutrality while proactively leveraging the field of motorsport. And now they will explore possibilities of introducing electrified motorcycles in actual race where they compete. Some of you might think something like, so let them raise their electric stuff. But it's worth mentioning that such projects are very capital intense, and the maker would not have started those activities if they were not looking to pay off their investment. I assure you that we will later see on serial bikes the technologies that Honda will be testing on e-racing. 
Some news from the world of motorcycle gear innovations. I've already told you about airbag jackets, airbag pants and even airbag shorts. Now it's the time for a backpack, an airbag backpack of course. There is a company called In Motion that designs motorcycle airbag systems that we can found on some of the gear industry's leading brands, such as Furigan, RST and even in the MotoGP. So they decided that as long as many motorcyclists carry backpacks when riding, why not to offer them an airbag backpack instead of a regular one? And they produced it. It looks like a regular backpack, 18 liters of capacity, all kinds of pockets, nothing unusual except of the back protection and the airbag. The airbag is an advanced one, it's sensor-based and it's really huge, protecting head, neck, shoulders and chest. But there is a disclaimer, the backpack only suits low-velocity vehicles like bicycles or urban scooters. And also it might look ridiculous for some of the cities, it would look really smart and handy for the cities like Barcelona, where the speed is about 20. 40 kilometers per hour and where lots of people ride scooters wearing only a helmet and gloves. I think that these guys would love the airbag backpack for sure. I have a series of motorcycle gear related videos on my Russian channel. Those videos were made with support of MotoCap, an Australian state program to test motorcycle gear, the most advanced and useful program globally. They test not only the protection itself, but also the level of temperature comfort and level of waterproofness. It's a pity they only cover of a limited range of models. Let me remind you once again how cool the program is. It's in the news digest because I would like to share with you the five worst motorcycle jackets based on the test of around 250 jackets. Let's have a look at what we shouldn't buy. Triumph Riding Hoodie, rated half a star out of five possible stars. Despite its name, there are no protecting elements at all and it shows poor abrasion resistance. No pockets to install protection either, so one can only use it as casual clothes. Next one, unexpectedly, Dainese Airframe D1, also half a star. It comes with impact protection installing both the elbows and the shoulders, but the level of protection is poor. The jacket showed low abrasion resistance and low burst range. One more half of star rated jacket is by Harley Davidson. Poor abrasion resistance and low burst range, no protection, but at least pockets for protection are there. Two other jackets are not known by mass audience. Johnny Rep Bucket's Way and Dre Rider Motion. So, if you are looking for new gear for next season, it would be smart to check out MotoCap for reviews. This would be the most comprehensive reviews that you can find. In 2023, Brembo launched a new product range called Green Ends, a merge of green and performance. The project combines a lower environmental impact, a more than 80% emissions reduction in dust and other dirty things, with stop braking performance. Also, not everyone might worry too much about the emissions produced by the brakes. Many users will appreciate the 3x longevity of both new pads and new discs versus the standard ones. To appreciate this, just imagine that the standard ones last three times less. Not even clear whether there will be an offering for motorcycles. I would like to close the digest with an interesting video that you can watch following the link in the description. Just have a look. Do you think it's possible to restore this? Or it's better not to try the impossible and just scrap the dead body? Well, the answer is yes, this can be restored. Enjoy the 15-minute video showing how enthusiasts restore the Triumph Tiger cap produced in 1963. It's especially cool that they do everything 100% manually, no sandblasting on powder coating for the frame or the swing arm just for the small part. Even the front fender, which was damaged so severely that I thought they would scrap it. And the video itself is made in a nice and professional way. You will find the link in the first part of the video in the description. If you like it, check out the other parts as well. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. I would appreciate your feedback and comments. See you next Friday.